Man, in today's video, man, I wanna tell you about uh, a brother that I met. You know, this will be going on three years that I've known this brother. And this encounter, you know, pretty much changed the trajectory and the course of my life. Let's talk about it. to the most high Yah shalom thank you for tuning in to another righteous spiritful episode today i'm back at an in them trenches handling that kingdom business man you don't realize how rare righteous fellowship is and all fellowship is not good fellowship you know there was a church that when i first moved here you know i was going to and it was a big christian church mega church and that's the last church that i went to and uh i met a not in that church but at work i met another israelite by the name of ock pierce and just that encounter and initial encounters was something that I had never experienced before solely because this brother was not trying to tell me that I didn't have understanding, but he was forcing me to go deeper in the word, uh, to look behind the word, you know, and challenge a lot of the stuff that I had grow up and challenge the stuff that I had grow up that I, and challenge the stuff that I have grown up thinking to be uh, correct because you learned it in the church. So, you know, this brother, Ock Pierce, man, shout out to you, is the first person to give me a, a, a Bible that had the apocryphers in it. And he asked a question, he said, how are you studying? And I remember it, man, we were standing in a parking lot what seems to be probably for about an hour after work. And we talked all the way up until probably about 6 p.m. And he kept asking, how do you study? How are you studying? What are you using to study? And I was like, man, I got a Bible. I got a KJV Bible. And he was like, okay. You know, asking me questions and things like that. Just to, and at that time, man, I had the, I had the typical Christian rhetoric. I was very, I was still, I was like, uh, I wasn't a part of the denominations, but I was non-denominational at that time. So I had that, I knew all the denomination stuff wasn't right if it's coming from the same book. But uh, he kept asking me, man, how were you studying? How were you studying? And Ock blessed me with a Cipher Bible. And if you know anything about the Cipher Bible, man, that Bible's easily a uh, hundred dollars easily over a hundred dollars depending on um the addition or uh the add-ons that you get and this had the add-on so probably a good hundred and ten dollars and i bless me with this you know uh just in an attempt to correct my walk so i had uh proper study tools and then this bible it restored all of the uh the hebraic names I had never, I had heard of all these other names, but I had never seen them concretely uh, in a Bible. So the name of the Most High Yah, Yahuwah, the name of uh, the Messiah, Yahushua Hamashiach, you know, you know, the, the word gospel, Basora. So it, 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 instead of saying Israel, it said Yashriel, you know, uh, instead of, uh, you know, Paul was saying Shaul and it restored all of that stuff. And man, it took me a lot of flipping through that and then Ock getting with me studying 
uh, to get me to the point that you see today. You know, uh, when I'm using uh, etymology or ethmology, as people say, man, that took somebody close on the ground. And I tell you, man, I've been in Bible studies. I've been a part of the Christian church and you're not going to get anybody to teach you uh, in depth like that. When they don't understand something, they use Christian rhetoric, feelings, emotions, and opinions to try to explain something. And Ock was coming from the complete different angle. He was like, no, where is it in the book? Where is it in the book? And I'd be like, ah, ah. And that always forced me to uh, seek out answers in the book and then realizing that, okay, just because you didn't find it doesn't mean that it's not there. There's possibly you haven't been walking long enough for certain things to be revealed from you. And it's possible that you haven't been walking long enough for things to be revealed to you. You know, another uh, thing that I knew that, man, this was going to be a set apart relationship was this brother not only blessed me with a C for Bible, but he blessed me with a uh, Strong's Hebrew Greek uh, lexicon or concordance where it had all those words. And trust me, it took it took some time learning how to use that book. And I still use it to this day. And I had a a good bit of uncomfortable moments because I was used to pretty much, uh, I was used to pretty much, you know, using an ESV, a KGV Bible, using a dictionary and coming to conclusions that were not accurate. And I encourage you to uh, look at the difference between a uh, uh, dictionary and a an lexicon or a concordance because there's a big difference in the dictionary pertaining to the English language where a lexicon or a concordance is going to take you back through the meaning of words through their original language. And, uh, you know, this brother continued, you know, to wash me with the word, even, even being in the military, there's certain conversations you don't have because you don't know at one point somebody will be offended. And I'm, I'm thankful that the most high Yah put this brother in my path and he had it in his heart uh, to carry out the will of the most high Yah to make sure that my walk was corrected. Because honestly, I tell you, I was on the wrong side of the law. I was on the wrong side of the law, meaning like, okay, man, I had found out about straightway, but I wasn't locked in. I heard some of the things I'm like, man, what is this talking about Christianity? I never understood uh, some of the teachings because my study methods weren't where they need to be. I wasn't studying to show myself approved. I was pretty much just studying for uh, motivation. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of what they teach in Christianity is, you know, they cherry pick motivational uh, you know, scriptures that can can help tickle that flesh and be used to uh, get you to not really change, but get you to feel as if you've already made it and the text doesn't read like that. You know, so this brother was, was uh, challenging me to what does the word Christian mean? And I had, like I said, I had the typical uh, Christian answer. It means followers of Jesus. And then he said, okay, go back and look behind that word, Jesus. What is the original name? You know, uh, so many different aspects. And we have these, you know, I'm very blessed that we're able to have these moments of fellowship throughout the week, you know, and a minimum of sometimes once a week, sometimes twice a week, man, where we have very uh righteous fellowship, engaged conversations focused on the will of Yah, where, you know, where in Christianity, you pretty much say all this stuff because you memorize how to, godliness is next, godliness is next to cleanliness. 
can't nobody show you where this stuff is in the Bible. Nobody's trying to correct your walk. The Bible study pretty much consists as, okay, you got somebody that's been ordained by the church, possibly not by the Most High Yah, and they're uh, pick one or two passages and they say, what do you guys think about this? They read it. What do you guys think about this? Everybody gives their opinion. And then the person who has been ordained to lead that Bible study tells you their opinion of it. And none of this stuff in which is concrete at all. None of this stuff. And if it wasn't for, you know, my op taking the time to show me, hey, this is, this is, you know, when you read this in the New Testament, don't, or the renewed covenant, don't think that this is new because look over here uh, in Torah and we will see that it's talking of the same thing. You know, that was the brother that helped me uh, establish the connection that a lot of the stuff that you see Mas Messiah talking about, if you have shut yourself off from the front half of the book, you're not going to understand the life of Messiah, the, the life of Yahshua, and a lot of the stuff that he was teaching. A lot of people don't understand what it means uh, to fulfill the law because they haven't been taught proper study. You know, so they think this is the end. It's done away with. They've shut themselves off. I can encourage me, uh, encourage me to get in the Torah and to learn about the law because I had the same view. The law is bad. And he would say, man, what's wrong? What's what's wrong with the law? What's bad about it? I couldn't, I couldn't tell him. I was just moving off of uh, the replacement theology teachings that I picked up in Christianity thinking that that was going to be good enough. And that's what I said, man. You know, I truly was able to get me in a spot of seeing, okay, not only is spiritual warfare is real, but just because somebody says that they're spiritual doesn't mean they have the Ruach HaKodesh, the genuine Ruach HaKodesh. Because especially in the last days, man, we are in a, a state where everybody is having a spiritual awakening, but everybody's not being uh, woken by the Ruach of the Most High Yah. You know, there's there's all kind of different forms of wisdom that people moved in, and the people are people will say stuff like, "I love God," you know, "I love Jesus," and but when you, you know, if it wasn't for coming in my life, man, I would have never, I would have never uh, pretty much got on the path of calling the most high by his actual name versus using this very vague title uh, that was put in place, you know, by the heathens and didn't really know about any of these other deities. Wouldn't have known anything about uh, ball worship you know, uh, Nimrod and Tammuz, but him showing me pivotal things in the Bible to help my walk. I said, Oh snap. Now I see how that, that word, uh, Lord is used interchangeably. Now I can see, okay, how the penmanship of the scribes is in vain. And they're simply, simply people that have been in ministry in Christianity for years and never have access to someone to help strengthen their walk. My heart was set on changing. My heart was set on, you know, the most high Yah. It's just, you know, when you look at the pillars of the Bible and how they were able to be uh, examples and people started following, man, that's, that's what Ock Pierce was in my life. You know, you know, currently in the works, man, I've told this brother, man, you know, and some of the some of the conversations we had and we have, I said, man, you know, if we could just capture a glimpse of that, people need to hear it because there's times where we get so deep in the word and start thinking about stuff. You wonder like, man, who else has thought about that? What is, is this the nugget that somebody needs to hear to connect the dot? 
you know, would this conversation uh, help correct their walk? So yeah, man, we definitely, uh, you know, don't know what the Most High Yah is gonna do with that in that direction. But man, I just wanted to share that testimony because, I, man, I got I got pastors in my family uh, on on both sides and and ministers and all these people that's got all these different titles, but ain't none of them told never never told me or shown anybody how to study incorrectly. But none of them have ever, uh, you know, put forth the labor of love that my dear brother did. None of them. And this is what I'm saying, man. You're going to meet a lot of people that will tell you they love you. You're going to tell, you're going to meet a lot of people that tell you that they have you're going to meet a lot of people that tell you that they have your best interests at heart and they would never hurt you. But these are some of the same people that are trying to keep you in idolatry, that are trying to keep you in iniquity, that are trying to keep you lawless, that are trying to keep you double minded. So uh, shout out to my brother, Ot Pierce, man, and may the most high y'all bless your house, because if it wasn't for that encounter, especially in the See, in the military, man, it, 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 it's, you got like, you have uh, uh, all the Baskin Robber flavors that you can get. All the Baskin Robbers. Because in the military, you got all the Baskin Robin flavors of religion. And they try to try to make it all like coexist. But there is some, some differences nobody likes to talk about. You know, when it comes down to, uh, I, kept saying, man, okay, now you know what these commandments are, you know, the choice is on you to actually keep it. So this goes into start learning how to keep the Sabbath. Man, I was keeping the Sabbath uh, when I first started doing it after I met Ock. Man, I was keeping the Sabbath, but I didn't really know what you could and couldn't do. Ock would show me, hey, you know, look over here and it's going to explain to you, uh, how you should conduct yourself, what you should do on the Sabbath. And I started, I started, that was the beginning of me highlighting stuff in my Bible, highlighting stuff left and right. My Bible was, man, I got notes all through there. You know, but I didn't know. At first I was keeping it, uh, you know, simply from, you know, from the time I wake up on Saturday all the way to Saturday night. I didn't know anything about Genesis when the sun sets and, uh, you know, when the sun falls. I didn't know anything about that. Didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about uh, not kindling a fire, you know, whether that be the physical meaning or the spiritual meaning. Didn't know anything about that. And Ock was there to be able to uh, guide me and still is, you know? So, man, you have to be thankful for the people in your life that have helped strengthen your walk, especially pertaining to righteousness. Everybody can give you some uh, religious advice, but they might not be led of the spirit. They may not be led of the Ruach. And you're gonna realize no conviction will come. You know, it, it, it's, I've met thousands of leaders, thousands of soldiers that claimed all kind of different religions and things like that. But it was truly uh, my brother that I could have physical contact with uh, that forced me to be better, gave me a different angle to look at stuff rather than filtering in through uh, opinions, logic and emotions and say, hey, let's incorporate what the book says, what the will of the Most High Yah is. You're thinking about this, but you're thinking about it in a worldly way. You know, uh, let's go to here and see what this says. Read it for yourself. That was his thing, man. I don't have to convince you of anything. Only thing I got to do is put the information in front of you. It's been there the whole time. Why haven't these people shown you this? I tell you, man, you know, when you meet rare brothers and sisters that love you enough to not only tell you the truth, but guide you in the truth, man, it's something special. It's priceless, man.
Can't put a price on it. But yeah, man, I'm gonna try to get my uh my brother on the channel at least for one interview. Um, you know, and he can tell his experience in where I was because I can tell you he'll probably he'll probably be able to add in a lot of the details that I'm missing out. And that's very, very uh important because where I thought I was walking, you know, on a journey, man, I wasn't walking at all. You know, it was just all lip service. Like the word says, man, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. I wasn't leading forth in my daily life and my actions thinking about what is the will of Yah? What would the Most High Yah have me do? If uh, Yahshua was in this situation, what does his word say about how he conducted himself? What was his conduct? That wasn't, you know, that wasn't my mindset. My heart wasn't set on that, you know. It was simply, okay, something good happened. I'd be like, God is good, you know. But, man, don't take for granted the people in your life that are sent by the Most High Yah and be careful not to burn that bridge because once they've given you the message and you have rejected it, the Most High Yah can easily send them somewhere else to continue on with his his will. So I'm very thankful to have somebody in my immediate location uh, that I can fellowship with. Because I know a lot of people don't have it. They're, they're in a city. You might be the only one in your city, your town, um, to where, you know, you might be the only one in your city or town to where uh, you're trying to figure this stuff out on your own and you have no, no God, you know? So there you have it, man. Closer to y'all ministries, kicking that thing gun barrel straight. Wow.